What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Sixers rundown. This is the rundown for game three against the Boston Celtics. They lost again. Uh, they're down 2-1 in the series now. We've got to climb back. Hopefully we can come win game four. But again, Matt's back with us on the podcast and I'm very excited to do it with him again because um, the video was a success last time and he's got a brand new mic. So um, let's just get right into it. Let's ask Matt his first question. All right, so Matt, what went wrong with the Sixers last night? Like, what went wrong as a whole? They were pretty bad, and uh, I just want to hear what you have to say about that. Everything went wrong for the Sixers last night. Um, all of their issues were front and center, and it was really disappointing to see because you thought with Joel winning MVP, getting presented the trophy in front of his home crowd, they would be a lot sharper, have a lot more energy, but unfortunately, it was kind of the same issues that have always plagued them and it was hard and not not being able to finish inside it was maxi being over aggressive it was Embiid not trusting his teammates it was tobias not even looking for a shot and playing poor defense it was tucker not shooting and our, it was our bench guys not being two-way players and it all kind of manifests itself and it's it's one of the reasons why this was going to be a really tough series and to kind of compound the issue is that we just we didn't play with the same energy that Boston does and they're just a better team than the Sixers are outside of Embiid I mean just their entire team is is better so for us to not hustle to to loose balls and, and not go for offensive rebounds and and really, uh, really lose in that aspect of the game. It uh, we really had no shot, and I'm honestly shocked we uh, we didn't get blown out. The really only thing that kind of saved us was Boston didn't really shoot that well from from three. Otherwise, I think I think we would have lost by thirty. Yeah, the Sixers did not play well at all, which was kind of confusing because you think with Joel winning MVP that they would have came back and came out firing, but that's not what happened. They they should have gotten blown out by the way they were playing, but Boston was not playing well either. So we got to step up our game if we want to be able to beat the Celtics because if they're on fire and if they're doing good, there's no chance we beat them because even when they were doing bad, they were still able to beat us because that's how bad we played. So we have to step it up if we want to win game four and end up winning the series. But the next question, what went wrong with James Harden last night? He was awful. It was one of the worst performances of a sixer I've seen in a really long time. He just looked scared to shoot after he missed so much. And then he started trying to just chuck up threes and it didn't make any sense because he was missing them. I believe he started out like one for one for 12 or something like that and then he I believe he hit a three at the end when we were trying to climb back and then we weren't able to uh, finish it off but he was really bad last night so just tell me a little bit about James Harden and his struggles last night yeah Harden's performance last night was was miserable it was just it was one of the worst performances I've seen from any Sixers player uh, probably since uh, Ben Simmons in game seven against the Hawks a couple years ago and like a lot of this is just who who Harden is at this point. He's he's older. He he's not he's not as efficient. He he struggles to get by people. Struggles to finish in the lane. Sometimes a step back three is is hitting. Sometimes it's not. And and I'm I'm generally okay with that. Like if he if he shoots two for twelve, like I I can live with that. What what he can't be doing is is being indecisive in in his playmaking and how to run the offense and. And he was. I mean, you see, you saw multiple times where he gets to the lane and he has a he has a easy floater available, and then he he kicks it out to someone in in no man's land who who's got to throw up a, a worse shot, and he can't he can't be doing that because that that just brings the whole offense down. Because if if only he's struggling, I think we got enough like I think we got enough talented guys on offense that we can kind of we can kind of pick him up, but. But he has to be a good playmaker, and that's that's really what we have him there for. Like Embiid and Maxi are, are talented enough that like they can kind of shoulder the load of scoring. But Harden Harden cannot be a bad playmaker and a bad shooter, and also still expect to win. And and also his his defense was was atrocious too last night. Like he he can't be compounding that on top of him being frustrated on offense. Um, the only real adjustment the Celtics have made since game one is they're just pushing him full court with uh, with Smart and uh, Jalen Brown, and I, I think just over the course of the game that just that just tires him out, and he he 
he can't really deal with that the same way he used to. He's just he's just older now, and and it's a it's a struggle. So I I don't I don't know what the answer is for the Sixers going forward, but but it it kind of just comes as simple as is Harden just has to be better because if he plays like that, uh, they're not going to win any games left in the series. So uh, gonna gonna kind of be hopeful that he can he can turn it around here, but. But that was that was not a good sign. Yeah, the Sixers would really love a vintage James Harden performance in Game 4 if they want to try to pull out a win because he was lightning in Game 1. He did really well, and that's why we were able to pull out that Game 1 win. But he's been struggling the last couple of games, and that's why we haven't been able to pull out the win. Joel Embiid dropped 30, and it was, still wasn't enough. We need more of our star players to step up, like him and Maxi. To need, they both need to step up. And that brings me to my next point. What's wrong with Tyrese Maxey? Is he going to step up in and have one of his big games in this series? We haven't seen that yet. He's been struggling like we talked about in the preview. Um, so let me know your thoughts on Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, last night was why I was worried about Tyrese coming into the series. And he just, he's just, uh, he's he's awesome. Like Tyrese is, is probably my second favorite sixer behind, behind Joel. But He's just, he doesn't have the, the dribble moves. He doesn't have the, the handles and control that, that are needed to, to really be uh, a consistent offensive threat. And even though he's an amazing shooter, his uh, three-point shoot, three shooting is, uh, it goes up and down. And last night he, he could not make, he couldn't make any of his outside shots. And, and he can't, he can't really, Unless he's just doing a straight line drive past somebody, he can't uh, he can't really generate super easy layups for himself. They're always in extremely difficult running at full speed as he's flying past the backboard trying to lay it in. And when when we got when the Celtics have Robert Williams back there, like he he just has no chance. And you saw three or four times where he's just he's just driving out of control without a prayer of making it and. Like he he's got to be better than that. Like he's got a good floater game. Like he doesn't have to try to get all the way to the rim. Like he can he can kind of stop and just take a jumper, and, and I can I can live with that. But um, for him to for him to kind of just be out of control, it was it was uncharacteristic of him, and I I expect him to be better. Um, and I think he will have like a breakout game, one game in this series, but. Um, I, I think I think that's probably going to be more so what we live with from Tyrese in the series. Celtics just have so many good defenders to throw at him. It just makes it so hard for him. It's hard to get out in transition where he excels against the Celtics. They don't they don't really let that happen. And um, for him to have a really good game, I think it's got to be from from the three point line and um, and maybe maybe a little bit of his floater game. Um, I think he needs to he needs to kind of refocus on that touch and and get back into into what makes him Tyrese Maxey. But um, I, I'm hopeful that he can have a bounce back game. I think he'll be a lot more efficient uh, in game four. I think that's kind of one of my hopes on, on how the Sixers can, can get out of Philly with a win on Sunday. But I, I think he can turn it around. Yeah, the Sixers would love to get Tyrese Maxey back for game four. A good Tyrese Maxey performance might just be what they need. He was talking in the film session yesterday. He said they were real with each other after they watched the film and reviewed the game together. And so maybe this is going to help light a spark inside of him to be like, oh, I need to step up for this team. Um, I know I'm young, but it's my team now and I have to help them try to get these wins in the playoffs to get to the next round. So maybe maybe that film session would help him that uh kind of discover who he really is in the playoffs because he hasn't really showed up yet in the playoffs in his rookie season he did step up a little bit in that Hawks series when they were sitting Ben Simmons more for his poor play but Tyrese Maxey the last couple years he's I mean he's had great regular seasons and he, he's had his moments in the playoffs but so far he's just not really had his moment in the playoffs and I think his moment's going to come sometime this series hopefully in game four or game five a games that we need to win so game four is a must must win for the Sixers so hopefully he can have this performance in game four but before we get into our next point let's talk about the shot selection what was the what was wrong with the so shot selection in this game it just it was like they were chucking up threes or they were just running to the net not even trying to like make a good finish they were just like throwing the ball up and sending a prayer and hopefully it fell down 
Um, it just, it just really didn't look good. It was frustrating to watch, especially like James Harden. He went two for twelve. So many missed three pointers. This te- this team needs to make three th- uh, three pointers or stop shooting three pointers. It's been getting frustrating to watch them missing all these shots. You're not gonna win if you miss all these shots. So let me let me hear what you have to say about the shot selection in this game. Yeah, when I think shot selection last night, I think I think there's one that really sticks out in my mind is when this when the Sixers cut it down to two. I think in the third quarter, and they they had a chance to take the lead, and Embiid was really starting to get hot, and he was he was killing it in the third quarter, and Harden comes down the court, and Embiid wants the ball, and Harden waves him off and takes a step back three that goes nowhere close. And then on the other on the other end of the court, I think Boston gets a gets a three pointer, and it just kind of sums up the night. And like Harden's got to got to have a better feel for the game there. Like get it to Embiid; he's starting to really get it going. Like get the, get the crowd behind you, get the game tied up, and and just kind of go from there. Uh, almost as almost just as bad as like the the shot selection was was some of the not shot selection like. You had P.J. Tucker passing up wide open three-pointers. You had Tobias being indecisive. You had Harden just passing up wide open shots. Um, you had Maxi being completely out of control at times. Like, it was it was bad. And, like, like I said before, like, a lot of this comes back on, on Harden just to, to set the offense, calm everything down. And I think I think we'll get better shots in game four. But, um when when your point guard is is really struggling like that and like everything's kind of chaotic you're you're kind of dependent on just individual talent to to score there and that's it's kind of why Embiid did really well because like the only good offense they could get is just uh give Embiid the ball and let him let him try to score but everybody else couldn't because they they didn't there was no good good offense being generated for them and they're not they're not talented to just go score by themselves and um, I really hope they, they come out with a little bit better game plan and uh, a better way of attacking Boston's defense um, in game four to, to try and steal a win. One thing that was continuously bothering me about the game was just the lack of effort and the lack of control on offense. You really saw it in the fourth quarter when the Sixers were down and they needed to pick up the pace they were scoring. So you'd think you want to pick up the pace on Boston's defense so they don't have time to reset and set up the defense to try to get a stop. But you see James Harden dribbling up the court, and he's jogging with two minutes left in the game down like six or seven points. That's not going to work. That's not going to work if you're trying to get back in the game. You can't have a slow, slow slow-paced offense when you're scoring. You need to get a better pace. The Sixers need to get a better pace on offense, and they need to find more of a feel. They need to take the shots that can go in, not the shots that hopefully can go in. They need to take shots that they think, oh, this is going to go in when I shoot this ball. This is going to be a good shot. This is going to, this is a good shot selection. Not, oh, let me see if I can hit a step back three, pray that it falls. That's what the shot selection was in the, in game three. And I, I, did not like to see that. So hopefully they can pick apart Boston's defense better in game four and just play better overall. Now, the next point is Joel Embiid. I really want to talk more about Joel Embiid because he won his MVP yesterday. It was, it was great for him. It was a very emotional day. And he's playing on an injury, and he played really tough. He dropped 30 points. So tell me how you think Joel Embiid's doing on playing tough on this his knee injury. Yeah, so with, with how negative I've been, the one positive and why I'm hopeful that this is still a series and the series isn't over is that Embiid was Embiid looked really good last night. For him uh, having agreed to spring, like he looks way better than I ever anticipated. He's he's been dominant on defense and he, he was really got into a good offensive rhythm last night. And I think I, I hate to say it, but I, I think the only way we kinda win uh going forward is you gotta got to kind of run through and be on the offense end too. And like um, that can be tough for him to dominate on both sides of the ball like that. But I, I really think that he's the only thing that, that makes the Sixers close to the Celtics and the Celtics can't really stop him. Like anybody that they single covered him with, like just got dominated Robert Williams, Horford, Grant Williams, like, um, basically, they they kind of just tried to draw charges. Like Marcus Smart leaned his face into Joel's L, um, shoulder just to get a call. Um, like Embiid can dominate this team one on one, and then when Boston starts sending doubles, 
uh, I think Embiid can kind of pick them apart from passing. So I, I hope one of the adjustments going into game four is, is kind of let Embiid like kind of do the Embiid show and maybe see if Harden can kind of get going off of that and then maybe maybe uh, maybe play that into to a <clears throat> more well-rounded offense. But that's that's the one positive I'm hanging on to here with uh, with just as how good Joel looks, even though he's still injured. So uh, staying hopeful there. And one thing to be optimistic about Joel Embiid is that Doc Rivers said he was feeling great yesterday after they talked about how Game 3 went. He felt great after the game. So hopefully that this leads into him in the rest of the series, leading to him doing really well and feeling good on his knee. Because if Joel Embiid is at 100%, there's no better player in the league, okay? He's just too good on 100%, but he's rarely on 100%, so it's it's hard for him to be that dominant, especially in the playoffs when he's had a whole regular season of being worn down and being double teamed the whole season, but he's finally starting to feel a little bit better. He's still nowhere near 100%, but he's playing great. He's playing the best on the Sixers right now, so he's if he's feeling great, then that's a really good sign going into game four and going into the rest of the series as the Sixers try to climb back. Now, the last point I want to talk about, just give me your predictions on predictions or thoughts on game four of the series. I've been telling myself this is a different team all year. They, they've they seemed more resilient. They've been, um, even when there's adversity, they always manage to um, to kind of answer the bell and, and play well. And when their backs are up against the wall, they figure out how to, how to get it done. And I, I think they do it again in game four. Um, I, I pray that they don't just kind of roll over and and quit, but I think they're going to have a lot of fight. I think there's going to be a lot of desperation uh, tomorrow uh, for Game Four, and I I think it's going to be uh, I think the Sixers are going to pull it out, um, get it get the get the series even, and we'll uh, we'll see how things go in Boston. But I think the Sixers win a close game um, on the back of Embiid, where he's he's in the upper 30s, low 40s for points and. I think that's just going to how they uh, they have to get it done. But I think they pull it out today. And I believe if there is one Sixers team in the last five to six years that comes back in the series and ends up beating the Boston Celtics, I think it's this Sixers team. Maybe that, that team with Jimmy Butler and J.J. Redick, but I think this team has that fight with guys like Maxie, Embiid, Harden, Paul Reed, Tobias Harris, every, P.J. Tucker, everyone's... Everyone's resilient on this team. I think P.J. Tucker is going to play a big role in this series in coming back. He's just a, a scrappy player that the Sixers need in a series like this to play against guys like Marcus Smart, the flop king, my least favorite player in the history of the NBA. But the, you need guys like that when you're trying to come back in a series, and I think that this team is the team that's going to do it and finally get us past the second round. But that's going to do it for this rundown. Matt, I want to thank you again for joining me. It was a really good video. And you're you're going to be a great guest on the Sixers podcast from now on. It's, it's, been, it's been fun. And uh, every, everyone's liking the videos. Everyone's loving them. So thank you again for joining. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss anything on all things Philly sports. Comment down below of what you thought of the rundown and what you think about Game 4 and the rest of the series against the Boston Celtics. That's going to do it for me. And I'll see you guys in the next rundown.